but it creates more connections between your brain that's interest-based and the things you're trying to incorporate into your daily things that you do. Hello lovely humans, welcome to this space on the internet. This video is a compilation of the most helpful things I've sort of gathered over time and implemented in my own life to be more functional. I will preface this video saying that functionality is not a determinant of worth in any way whatsoever. You are not measured by your productivity or so-called functionality because functionality is subjective and only relevant to the situations and environment that surrounds you. Anyways, don't use functioning labels. <laughs> so while I will be using the term functional in this video, I don't mean to say that it has any effect on their worth as a person to not be what is typically deemed functional. What functional means, for the sake of this video, is able to coordinate in such a way that makes activities and events in your life easier and more sequential. That's the definition of functional I'm going to be using in this video. So let's get on with our life hacks. These may be sort of catered to neurodivergent people and that's probably because we tend to struggle with with the sticky in-betweens of functionality more than neurotypical people do. Or at least that's how I would phrase it. These tips will likely be most useful to those of us who struggle with things like task initiation, motivation, distractibility, or difficulty with object permanence and needing visual reminders a lot of the time. It will be helpful to those of us who are very forgetful or have a lacking sense of time, but I hope that these things that I've adapted to my life can be adapted to your own in ways that benefit you. Tip number one, put stickers on your shit. It might sound a bit stupid, um, but this is one of the things that has helped me the most <laughs> just in my daily to doing this functionality situation. I put stickers on my water bottle because I have a long, 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 very, 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 very long history of losing water bottles. No matter how expensive or pretty or like, perfect or like what size they were or I've lost a lot of water bottles in my time and this is like a literal financial drain and also just means that I don't drink water both things that are integral to going about life as a human so I should mention that the sticker trick as I'll now call it is most effective when the stickers you put on your stuff they're stickers of things you like they're stickers that you really really like I think this is particularly relevant to neurodivergent people because we tend to have interest-based nervous systems and can more easily interact with things that highly interest us than boring stuff that we don't care about. So for example, here's my laptop. This is a thing I put stickers on because it makes it pretty and it does help me remember it and like connect it with my normal daily functions. But I have a neurodiversity Care Bear, one of my favorite stickers ever, my mom got it for me. I have an octopus eyeball, which I think is absolutely epic. My mom also got it for me. I love octopuses. I have, excuse me while I hyperfixate, <laughs> Space Llama. I love space and llamas. A typewriter, I love typewriting. No, I don't love typewriting. I love writing. Get happy and flap, flap, flap. Pride, cause I'm gay. I think this is a bubble tea sticker that I randomly found. And Ponyo. I love Ponyo. I want to get a Ponyo tattoo. What do you guys think of me getting a Ponyo tattoo? Because I'm really feeling like I want a tattoo right now. Comment down below if you have any thoughts on that. So, basically the job of the sticker trick is to attach strings between you and the object you were trying not to lose. There's a fly. Go away. Anyways, so you're creating connections between you and the thing you were stickerifying. For example, I also have a water bottle with stickers on it because I was talking about I lose my water bottles. I don't know how I got to my computer, but anyways, I lose water bottles a lot. So I've stickerified my water bottle with things I like, but it creates more connections between your brain that's interest-based and the things you're trying 
to incorporate into your daily things that you do. Now I have a web of connections and things that I think about the stickers on my water bottle that are attached that can't really come off, that can obviously a little bit, but anyways. I have so many thoughts that are now associated with the water bottle. I'm more likely to think of like equality or neurodiversity or a Ghibli movie than to think of I should drink water. So it sort of fast tracks your brain wiring to think of your water bottle. That's kind of how I've experienced it anyways. This makes it more likely that my water bottle or other stuff with stickers on it, um, it makes it more likely that I'll think of it and then that I won't lose it. And you could apply this to other things that aren't stickers such as like pins, clips, or any like attachable decorative that you can attach to something so that you don't lose it. Also related to my water bottle, I have a lot of issues drinking water. My rule this is hack number two, by the way. My rule is that every single time I see my water bottle, every single time I see my water bottle, or I think of water, every time my brain hits that circuitry of water, I have to drink my water. Even, like it doesn't have to be much, it can just be a tiny sip, but every single time. Because if you just do it right when you think of it, a little bit every time you happen to think of it, it's better than being like, oh, I'll do that later, and then never doing it, because you never think of it later. So I'm gonna abide by my own rule here and drink some water. I can see this trick working for people like me who like rules and have a lot more ease in implementing rules and sort of like compulsion type things in your brain. Those are easier to motivate and get you functioning and doing the thing you need to do. I'm better at rules than not rules. I really like rules. So while I'm still chronically dehydrated, I do drink a lot more thanks to my compulsive habit of always drinking water whenever I think of water. And I found in combination with my sticker trick, I'm more likely to just take this thing everywhere with me and I still haven't lost it because I've had times where like, I'm scared of losing water bottles now because of like the emotional and financial cost of water bottles losing them anyways. So I'm scared to bring them places, so I don't drink water because I don't bring my water bottle anywhere. But now, with this system I've established, I can bring my water bottle places and I'll drink it and not lose it so far. Next tip, tip number three, get a big ass planner widget. So I have Timo, it's a visual planner app designed for neurodivergent people. Timo, please sponsor me. I'd be such a good, I could, I love Timo. Anyways, I use Timo, but in theory any planner app that you happen to use would do just fine if it has a widget option. So when I open my phone, which I do a lot randomly because it's just a thing I do whenever I'm not doing something, it's just a thing that happens a lot. The first thing I see when I open my phone are my things I need to do. There's my planner and the stuff I have to do so I can see it and there's no escaping it and I'm seeing it regularly because I'm attached to my phone a lot of the time. Because if this information was hidden from me as it is in planner books and on calendars, things that aren't always on my person, if it were hidden I wouldn't see it and thus would forget everything I have to do. So yes, function correctly with a widget. Do recommend. Tip number four. Befriend your future self. I do this to encourage me and motivate me to do hard things. So if I have a task to do that I find particularly difficult, for example, doing laundry, I can remind myself that if I do laundry now, future L doesn't have to do laundry. This in a funny way sort of helps with self-compassion and self-love because when you <laughs> disassociate yourself with a future version of yourself and view them as different people in the way I have, I feel like I'm more likely to be compassionate towards someone else, even if it is me but I view them as a friend, right? So I want to take care of future me. I want to do the hard things for future me so future me won't have to. And I can think of future me as a bit of like a friend that I can push my acts of service love language onto. I like being a friend <laughs> to my future self. And this works in reverse because when you're just like so incapable of doing anything, like laundry, understandably, your future self if you're in a really bad place, you can think to yourself, my future self is going to pick up the slack where present me is not. <laughs> and create a loving, positive relationship between yourself now and your future self. Tip number five, now or never. 
So I actually learned this from someone on TikTok, not gonna lie. Their name is Madeline Pendleton. So full credit to them, they introduced me to this idea of now or never. The whole idea being that never is a valid option. So every time it occurs to you that you have a thing to do, think to yourself, am I going to do that thing now? Or should we really just move past this and never return? <laughs> so this applies to those of us who have amazing new ideas and make elaborate plans of all the things we're going to accomplish. We start a project, the moment we need to take a break to do something else or get distracted, we will completely abandon that project and the like remnants of what we started are going to haunt us forever and never be dealt with. So you're never touching this project again, that's just accumulating materials and it happens over and over and over again to every project you start and then don't end up finishing. So in these situations, according to the now or never tip, you, for example, realized, oh, I cut up a bunch of magazine pieces to make a vision board with, but then I didn't actually glue the stuff to the board, so now the, the momentum the dopamine of the vision board creation is gone and you can say to yourself, am I going to sit down and finish this vision board now or am I just gonna clean up the pieces and put them in the garbage probably or recycling and just move on so that this vision board project doesn't pre like doesn't occupy more brain space than it's worth, um, especially if you're easily distracted. That can just have an effect on your ability to complete other such tasks. Okay, right, tip number six? I think it might be six. Leave your stuff out in the open for all to see. What I mean by this is leave your things in places that your eyes will naturally, like, fall. And leave things in places that make sequential sense. So, for example, keeping the pills that you take at nighttime beside your bed might be a good idea. This applies to if you've made a list, you can put it right at your eye level on your wall or at a place that you are looking at often. The most looked at spot. That's where you put your list so that you see it every time because if you don't see it, it's gone. If you have to make a salad for supper, put your recipe right on your fridge so that every time you make food you're realizing that you should be making that salad. Make sure your toothbrush and deodorant are always visible when you go to the bathroom. So every single time you go to the bathroom it at least occurs to you, oh should I be brushing my teeth right now? Should I put on deodorant? You need those visual reminders in order to actually just do a thing. Basically put things in your way where you'll see it and you can't forget it or ignore it. Tip number seven, potentially. Make activity resource lists. So I actually recommend making two of these. One with actual productive activities. Productive. That you can always do if you happen to have extra time on your hands with nothing to do. And one with leisure activities when you aren't feeling so productive. Basically the purpose of these lists is to refer to them whenever you have unoccupied time um, and don't feel like staring at a wall because you're thinking of all the things you will have to do but don't have to do yet but will have to but time doesn't exist. So if you write an activity resource list, a list of things that you can always do, and beside its spot on the list, write how long it takes. So you can choose an activity from your list that corresponds with your timeline appropriately. It might also help if you write the first step of the activity right underneath it, so that you know how to get started. This tip is targeting the procrastination or difficulty with task initiation that many of us may have. For example, I have a list of videos to watch and how long each video is. These are videos I've actually already watched and I know I like, so I plan to have them handy for whenever I am in need of grounding and entertainment so that I'm not thinking of other things but at the same time not actually doing anything. I have videos ranging from like an hour to like 30 seconds. Be sure to keep these lists accessible to you so that you'll actually use them and you'll actually find yourself looking at them when you have nothing to do. I keep mine in my notes app conveniently with a widget. So every time I open my phone and swipe right, that's a dating app thing, isn't it? Swiping right. Well, swiping right on my phone takes me to where my notes widget is and I can see the title of the note I have where all of my activity lists are. So that was seven or so tips on how to trick your brain 
in order to spark motivation and task initiation and focus and all the things that make us more valuable to capitalism, to be honest, but nonetheless are important to our well-being in a lot of ways. Let me know if this helped you. These are just random general tips that I use in my life. Whether they'll be helpful to you, I don't know, but I hope so. Let me know if they are, or if you do the similar things, or if you have other tips to recommend. Also, I'm thinking of just now thinking, like this is one of those projects I'm going to start and maybe forget about, but I'm just now thinking that I should make a back-to-school version of this video with back-to-school tips and tricks and functioning. Yes, we're going to function in the hellhole that is school. So I guess let me know if you want a back-to-school how to be a human tips. So that is everything for this video. We'll see you next time on the space in the internet. Bye!